Okay then, so to begin with, we're gonna set up a starter project using Node and Express. And in this lesson, there's actually not gonna be any HTMX content, or at least there's gonna be very little. We will be linking to the HTMX library, but that is about it. So if you don't care about setting up an Express app, or if you're already really comfortable just doing that on your own, then feel free to skip to the next lesson. However, if you wanna follow along exactly like me, then stick around and we'll set the starter project up together. And you can find that starter project, by the way, on the course files repository right here. You just need to select the starter project branch. Then you need to hit the code button to download a zip folder of that branch. Once you've done that, unzip the folder and then open up the project in VS Code. Right then, so once you've got that folder open up in VS Code, the first thing we need to do is install any dependencies listed in the package.json file. To do that, open a terminal and type npm install in the root directory, then hit enter. That's gonna grab any dependencies for us and put them into a new node modules folder. All right, so now that's done, let's have a quick look around this starter project. And if any of this goes completely over your head, and you're really confused about the code, then feel free to check out my Node crash course, first of all, either on YouTube or in NetNinja Pro. And that crash course explains all of this stuff in much, much more detail. So then, as you can see, I've already created a bare bones of an Express backend in the app.js file. First of all, we import Express, which is a dependency we just installed. Then we make the Express app by invoking that Express function we imported. Beneath that, we use this Express URL encoded middleware on the app, which allows URL encoded data sent from web forms to be passed by Express and attached to request objects so that we can access it. We'll see that later. And you can actually see one of those request objects, by the way, right here inside this get request handler. So this is how we make handler functions for different types of requests in Express. This one right here is saying that when a get request comes into the app to this endpoint, which is just a forward slash, the root URL, via this handler function. Inside that function, we get access to two arguments, a request object containing data about the request and a response object, which we can use to send back a response like this right here using the send method. Right now, we're just sending back an empty response, but pretty soon we'll be sending back some HTML. Above this request handler, we use the express static middleware to declare a folder where all static assets like images and style sheets can be stored. Then they can be all accessed from the browser from the root URL. And in fact, inside that public folder, we already have a style sheet with some styles in it. So we'll be linking to this from the HTML later on. Now at the bottom of the file, we tell the app to listen for requests on a specific port number, 3000 in this case. And that means when we run this app locally, we can visit localhost port 3000 to trigger this root get request handler right here. Because remember, when you visit a URL in a browser, you actually send a get request to the server. And generally the server responds with an HTML page. Now we're not doing that just yet, but we're about to. So right here where we send an empty response at the moment, I now wanna send back an HTML page. Now, if you're building a larger application, you might wanna use a template engine like Pug or EJS or something else entirely to create your HTML views, which ultimately then gets sent back to the browser. And when you use those template engines, you can inject dynamic code and content into them, which is great. But to keep the focus squarely on HTMX for the rest of this series, I've decided that instead we'll just use JavaScript template strings to create our HTML views and snippets that we can respond with. And again, we can also inject dynamic content into template strings, which we'll need to do later on when we're working with data. Maybe in the future, I will do a series also about how to use HTMX with a template engine like Pug or something. So anyway, what we could do then is just create a template string of some HTML directly inside this send method to send back that HTML to the client. But instead, what I'd like to do is create a views folder. And then inside that views folder, we're gonna have a bunch of different files for different views we'll be using for the application. Now, those views could either be full page views, or they could just be views for small sections of the page and contain just little snippets of HTML. Anyway, inside the views folder, we're gonna create a file called index.js so that we can create an index HTML view. And notice this is a JavaScript file, right? And not an HTML one, because remember, we'll be using a JavaScript template string to make the HTML so we can output those dynamic values inside the templates later. Okay, so inside here, we're gonna create a function called create homepage templates. 
And this function can be called whatever you want, by the way, it doesn't have to be called this thing right here. But the job of this function will just be to return a template string with HTML code inside it. So this can be an arrow function that just returns that template string directly right here. So that's backticks, remember, to create that template string. Now, after this, we also need to export the function so that we can use it then in the app.js file to invoke it and give us that returned template, that template string. Now, if we were to just write some HTML tags inside this template string at the moment, then we don't get any kind of Emmet features or syntax highlighting as we would inside an HTML file. Because at the end of the day, this is a JavaScript file and we're working inside a JavaScript string, right? But there is an extension that I've already installed that gives us those Emmet and syntax highlighting features for inside a template string for HTML code. And that extension is called inline HTML. So if you want, you can install that first of all, if you wanna take advantage of those features, then once you've done that, if you come back to the template string backticks and add a little comment just before it, so forward slash, then an asterisk, and then type HTML, then do another asterisk and then a forward slash. And then now this template string will have Emmet features, autocomplete and syntax highlighting, which makes these HTML strings much easier to work with and also much more readable as well. So now we could add some HTML like a div with a class and that's gonna look much, much better this time around. Anyway, we don't just want a div tag, right? We want a full HTML page so that we can send it back to the browser. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the HTML code from my course files and you can do the same thing if you want and then I'm gonna paste it inside this template string so that you don't have to watch me type all of this out from scratch. So let me just very quickly go through this template. It's dead simple. We have an HTML tag, then inside that head with a title and also a link to the styles.css file in the public folder right here. Then we have the body a header with an H1 that says my reading list. That's for the page title. And then down here in the main tag, we have two sections, one for the book list, where later on we're gonna dynamically output all the books in a list. And then another div for the book form to add new books later as well, okay? So it's a very simple template for now. And what we want to do is send this template now back to the browser as a response right here, okay? So we need to send that. So what do we need to do then? Well, we just need to invoke this function, create homepage template over here, because remember that function returns the template string for us, which is the HTML. So if we invoke it right here, then it's gonna send back that template string for us. So we'll say create homepage template. I'm gonna click on this, should import it, but we need to add forward slash index.js to this, all right? And then we need to invoke that function as well. Let's save this. And then I'm going to run this app by opening up the terminal. Now I'm going to use Nodemon to run the app. And what that does is watch for any file changes. And when there's a change and we save it, it restarts the server for us. So those changes are going to be reflected when we visit the application in the browser. You can just use Node to run the application by typing Node and then app.js, which is this file right here but it means that every time we make a change to one of our files, then you need to cancel out of the process and rerun this. Now, when you install Nodemon, which you can do by typing npm install and then hyphen g to install it globally and then Nodemon, press enter to install it. Once you've done that, you can just type Nodemon and then app.js. Like I said, that's gonna watch for any changes and rerun the server whenever it detects any changes. All right, so now let's try this out in the browser by going to localhost and then port 3000. And hopefully we should see that homepage template. All right, so now when we view this in a browser, localhost port 3000, we can see this HTML template is sent back to us. So if we inspect over here, we can see it's exactly the same template that we just saw in our project that we created. So we're invoking that function, we're grabbing that template string and we're sending that back as a response and that's now rendered as HTML in the browser. Awesome. Right then, so now we have the Express app working. There's just a couple more things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is hook our HTML page up to the HTMX library so that we can use HTMX's features in the browser. So we can bring over the HTMX docs right here, which shows us how to get started with HTMX. And you're gonna see it actually is really, really simple. Just 
a link to a script like the good old days, and that's all there is to it. So you can either use a CDN or you can download a copy of the library, host it yourself. We're just gonna grab this CDN link to the HTMX library and I'm gonna add that then to the head of the HTML that we just created for the homepage. So let's go back to the HTML and we're gonna paste it somewhere inside the head and then that's all there is to it. Now we can use any HTMX features in this HTML page. Okay, so there is one more thing I wanna mention before we move on to the next lesson and start using HTMX and that is this data folder right here that I've already made and inside that we have a data.js file which contains the data we're going to be using later on. So this is just an array that we export called books data and at the moment we just have two book objects inside this array. Each book has an ID, a title and an author. And starting in the next lesson we'll be using this data inside our HTML templates when we make a request to the server using HTMX.